Hi, how are you, grade six students? Are you all safe? Hope so. So, guys, uh, this is our third lecture, uh, third recorded video during semester. Okay. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to uh, introduce a new uh, theme, a new reading lesson with its uh, vocabulary words, with its uh, skill, and also I'm going uh, to introduce a comprehension strategy. We use it in writing. First of all, the lesson is in Unit 5, Lesson 5. It's called Tools of the Explorer's Trade. Please focus, concentrate with me in the video, and everything will be easy for you. Objectives. We are going to introduce the big topic orally. Uh, we go are going to introduce the new theme. I'm going to introduce the vocabulary words through context clues. Uh, I'm going to read the words aloud and correctly, so if you can read them by yourselves. I'm going to identify the genre of the text. Let me tell you something, that the genre is not new, something familiar to you. I'm going to introduce a new comprehension skill. And then at the end, the comprehension strategy is to differentiate between connotations and denotations. What are connotations and denotations? Wait till the end of the video and you will know what are connotations and denotations. Before I go uh, in details, for sure, uh, when we finish this video and you uh, uh, at least uh, uh, you understand like 70 to 80% of it, you can go to the worksheet which is related to the video to solve it and for sure the worksheet is uploaded on the application. Okay, guys, let's start. Okay. Let's go now. Exploration. What is exploration? To explore, to discover, okay? Let's take the uh, essential question first. How have tools used for exploration evolved over time? So, uh, from the question, you can get the idea of a lesson which talks about the tools, the tools, which tools that are used for exploration and how they evolved and changed over time. Better ways to explore. Though I'm only about 10 feet below the surface, being at the controls of this subscooter, you see the, in the picture, this is a subscooter makes exploring the warm Indian Ocean waters a remarkable experience. So, this tool is used to discover the underground or underwater uh, places. I've always wanted to get close to sea creatures in their natural habitat, but diving and snorkeling equipment seemed so complicated and difficult. So one of the scientists says that he had always wanted to discover uh, the habitat and the creatures, sea creatures, but it would be difficult for humans to get under the water. So what helped this scientist to get under the water? This uh, sub uh, scooter, sorry, sub scooter. Why do we call it sub? Because it goes under the water. The application of simple submarine technology to a familiar scooter design lets me move around and discover at my own pace. This new tool for shallow water exploration has opened up a whole new world to me. Let's see in our lesson what are other tools used to, for exploration through history and now. But first of all, as we know, we have uh, two instruction about the team. Advances in underwater technologies give us new opportunities to explore the dark and remote depths of the waters, sorry, of the world's ocean. You see these tools, they are used to discover the world's ocean. We are developing equipment that can measure and analyze the startling and dynamic forces at work beneath the surface, surface of our planet. So you see, all of these allow us to discover beneath the surface of our planet. 
Rockets and the scientific instruments they carry provide the means to investigate the mysteries of outer space. So these allow us, if you notice, these three instruments or tools allow us to discover the underwater uh, world. And the rockets with other instruments allow us to discover the outer space. So every place or everything has its own tool or instrument. Okay, is it clear? We can move on now. Three words. They are not difficult, they are very easy and clear. First word is application. What is application? The instructions for raising a tent seemed easy, but their application was difficult. So I gave you uh, instructions to make a tent. But when applying them, it was difficult. So the application is the act when you make it act and you make an action, okay, for certain uh, maybe instruction when you put it into action. Catastrophic, the mudslide was mudslide is one of natural uh, phenomena or uh, disasters. Sorry, disasters. The mudslide was catastrophic for many towns in the area. Catastrophic, disastrous, okay? Computation. The, to monitor progress, they performed com computations using the data collected. So computations, you can simply get it to make cal calculations for sure. Deployed. To ensure safe conditions during the event, the police chief deployed additional officers. So he put additional officers into work and he gave everyone a certain task. Elevating. One of the doctor's recommendations was elevating his leg while it healed. So elevating is to raise to a high, a rise, rise, sorry, to a high level. Magnetic. Because of its magnetic properties, a certain type of ore attracts objects containing iron. So magnetic comes from magnet. Everything magnetic can attract metals and iron. Obsolete steam engine trains are now virtually obsolete. If you look at this picture, are these engines found anymore or used anymore? No. So something that is not used anymore, we call it obsolete. Last one. Subsequently, the stock was performing poorly, so we doubted it would subsequently improve. Okay? So, subsequently, step after step. Okay? Now we can move to go into the meaning of each word. Catastrophic, sudden and disastrous. Application. The act of putting something to use. Computations. Calculations that are determined by using mathematics. Deployed. Strategically arranged or distributed for a specific purpose. Elevating. Raising it to a higher position. Magnetic. Draws iron steel and other metal objects toward it or we can say attract obsolete something that is out of date and lo no longer used subsequently occurring or following in time or order so now that we finish the vocabulary words you i'm sure that you are able to solve the exercises in the Worksheets. There are several exercises related to the vocabulary words in order to let you practice more and more and master the words so you later use them in your writing. Okay, so they are very important to know the meanings and how to use these words. It's not a matter of memorizing, as I always say, it's a matter of understanding the meaning of each word to employ it or to use it correctly in a sentence, for example. So now, we have finished from the vocabulary words. I think that we can reading lesson itself.
Before I start with the reading lesson, we have to get introduced to the genre. And this is not a new genre, as you see. We have taken it before. It's an informational article, so it's an expository text. The informational article, Tools of the Explorer's Trade, explains the role technology has played in exploration. Expository articles may include graphs to represent concepts visually and sidebars to present opinions related to the topic. What does he mean? Let's see. Tools of the explorer's trade include descriptions and photographs of tools that were, were developed for exploration. The diagram on page 368, now you will go, you're going to see it when we move to the reading lesson, shows how one tool works. The sidebar on page 369 presents a specific opinion supported by evidence. The information in the line graph on page 369 makes an additional point related to the topic. Is this, you see, these are sidebars. Sidebars provide a way to add related information such as a definite opinion to the text. Graphs, graphs of numerical data often show how something has changed over time. These we call them text features, okay? So all of these add more information to the lesson. If you notice that the scientist is using a certain instrument or a tool, a sextant can still be used today to navigate at sea. What is sextant? Later in the reading lesson, we are going to know what is a sextant. I'm going to read for you the reading lesson to help you read it by yourself at home. Tools of the Explorer's Trade. The word technology sounds modern, but people have been using it for at least 300 years. Considering that one definition of technology is the use of knowledge for practical purposes, we can say, say people have been developing a new technology since the dawn of the human history. So new technologies have been uh, developed since History. Some of them are antiquated. Others, though old, are continually improved. Stone Age X's qualify as technology, as do the wheel and the telephone. The following survey of several historical navigation techniques is one example of how technologies evolve over time. So, uh, through the rest of the reading lesson, we're going to read about several techniques, historical and navigation techniques, and how they evolved and developed over what uh, over time. Let's start. The North Star. Sailors of early civilizations used the star Polaris, also called the North Star, to get their bearings at sea. But using the North Star for navigation had some serious drawbacks. First, it can only be seen on a clear night. So, attempting to navigate through unknown waters on a cloudy night could be catastrophic. Second, Polaris can be seen only from the Northern Hemisphere. While navigating with the North Star, was a good choice under certain circumstances, something better was needed. The astrolabe. The astrolabe was an advanced measuring tool invented in the Middle East, though its primary application was to make computations about time and the positions of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. It was also employed as a technological aid to navigation. The astrolabe gave mariners a way to determine the latitude of their ships while at sea. Look at this picture here. We have a Moorish astrolabe made in Andalusia, Spain. Okay, this is the astrolabe that uh, navigators used in old times. Let's move. Sextant. It's, oh, the sextant is another instrument. 
and it's here in the picture, okay? The sixth tent is another tool that uses the positions of the sun and the stars to find a location on Earth. First developed in Asia Minor in the late 10th century, it was used to measure the angle between a celestial object and the horizon. When navigators considered the measurement in relation to the time of day or night it was taken, they could find their ship's location on a nautical chart. Far from obsolete, this technology is still used today. As a backup to modern navigation technology. The compass. A compass is made by balancing a magnetic needle above a circular dial. Earth's own strong magnetic field causes the needle to swing into a north-south position. Because a compass indicates direction in all weather and at all times of the day or night, its importance as a navigational technology was quickly recognized. Historians are unsure who invented the compass, but we do not know it was in use in China as early as the 11th century. Look here at the picture. This is the sextant. The sext a sextant, right, and how it measures angles above. You see? Okay? And this is the compass. A compass uses Earth's magnetic field to show direction. And remember that it always goes through the uh, north-south position. Let's move on to the last part of the reading lesson. An opinion. Let's keep looking beyond. Many characterize the ongoing story of human exploration as one of the courage and creative resourcefulness. For most of history, exploration was confined to Earth's surface. But in 1930, we began diving into the ocean's depths. By 1969, we had landed on the moon. The probes that we deployed into deep space in 1977 are still transmitting valuable data back to us across billions of miles. Subsequently, we have sent robotic vehicles to survey the surface of Mars, and we have a powerful telescope in orbit that is sending us spectacular photographs of the formation of distant stars. Exploring the unknown has clearly fueled our invent our inventiveness, but it also inspires our imagination. Because we are constantly elevating our aspirations, we have been able to increase our knowledge even when expectations have been the worst. Modern technologies are providing more and better tools to explore increasingly remote places. In fact, when it comes to exploration, the best is certainly yet to come. We should always resist the idea that an adventure, adventurous insect might be foolhardy and we should continue to value and encourage curiosity. Let's take this uh, chart. Inventing as, as fast as we can, when the U.S. government grant, grants patents to promote the progress of science and useful arts, it gives exclusive rights to inventors for a set period of time. The numbers of patents issued in the years from 1850 to 2010 reveals a stunning increase in the rate of technological innovation. So the technolo technological innovations are increasing uh, day after day. Okay, so it's very important in our life now. And even they were, uh, they have been uh, developed uh, since history. But every period of time has its own technological tools uh, developed in a different way. So now that we have finished the from the reading lesson with the uh, with the vocabulary words, I think that it's time to move to the comp Comprehension skill is the compare and contrast. What do we mean by compare? What do we mean by contrast? Let's 
C. Compare and contrast showing similarities and differences. So, compare and contrast means showing similarities and differences. Compare. When we say compare, compare shows what is the same about two or more things. So, I have two things, two objects, maybe two people. Okay, I want to show their similarities or how they are the same. So, I'm comparing here. Example, I have oranges and bananas. Look at the oranges, look at the bananas. How are they similar? You eat both of them. I can eat both of them for sure. They are both fruits. They are fruits. You have to peel both of them. You cannot eat them before being peeled. You have to peel them, then you can eat them. Okay? Contrast. What do I mean when I say contrast? Contrast shows what is different about two or more things. So I have two things, two objects, two whatever, I don't know what, people maybe. I want to show how they are different. So here I'm using the contrast. I have the oranges and the bananas. What are the differences between the oranges and the bananas? Oranges are orange while bananas are yellow oranges are round you see the shape they are different in shape why the bananas are long so now till now i have differences in color and in shape oranges have seeds but bananas do not have seeds so these are differences i can find one thing in one fruit but i cannot find it in the other fruit okay so contrast is different from the compare so again, I repeat, when we say compare and contrast, compare is when we are showing similarities or where or how two things or two objects or two people are similar in a certain way. And when I say differences is when I'm talking about how two things, two objects or two people are different in certain ways. How do I organize my ideas? There is a certain diagram called Venn diagram that I use in order to organize my ideas when I'm comparing and contrasting. If you notice here, I have two circles, two intersecting circles. I have uh, two things, uh, object A and object B, for example, let's say. Here, I write the differences. On the sides, I write the differences. In the middle, I write the similarities since they are intersecting here in this place. So the Venn diagram is used to organize your ideas while comparing and contrasting. First of all, you know and love uh, this diagram. I am sure of that. A great way to organize your thoughts when you are comparing and contrasting two things is to use the Venn diagram. In the middle, you put how the two objects are alike. On the sides, you put how the objects are different okay so we use venn diagrams to compare and contrast on the sides we write the differences in the middle we write the similarities let's take this example which is about the uh, also the oranges and the bananas so on the sides we write the differences have the seeds doesn't have seeds orange yellow round round long in the middle, what did we add? We added the similarities. Fruit, can eat it, have to peel. You see? Now I organized my ideas. How do I differentiate between similarities and differences in a text? Now it's very important to know how to differentiate between similarities and differences in a text. Read the text well so you can compare ideas, events, characters, and other details. Use a Venn diagram to organize similarities and differences in the passage. Look for clue words. What are clue words? There are certain words that show comparison and the certain words that show contrast. The words that show comparison are like, like, same, both, the same as, similar, 
in the same way, most important similarity, similarly as two have in common as well as. Contrast words, although, whereas, however, while, differ, unless, unlike, contrary to, even though, yet, on the other hand, but, the reverse, instead, on the contrary. So these are clue words that show comparison and contrast. You have to keep them in mind, keep revising them. So when you read a sentence you and you look for a word clue in order to know if this sentence is showing comparison or if, if, it, uh, if it is showing contrast. So review at the end, compare is the similarities, contrast is the differences, and we are organize the ideas using a Venn diagram. Don't worry, for sure. Also, we have plenty of exercises related to compare and contrast in the, in the worksheet in order to solve it uh, individually. Then, you, we, then we solve it together. Okay, guys? Let's move on now. We have finished from the a new theme, the new reading lesson, the vocabulary words. From the comprehension skill, we can move to the last part of our recorded, uh, recorded lecture, which is the comprehension strategy. We use it in writing, which is connotation and denotation. What is connotation? What is denotation? We are going to in, uh, explain them in detail now. Okay? Denotation first. Denotation is the literal or primary meaning of a word. Literal, I mean literal, as it is written. Okay? Connotation. Connotation, the ideas or feelings that a word invokes. So, denotation, what the word exactly means. Connotation, what the feelings that the word carries. Okay? You want more explanation? In other words, connotation and denotation are two principal methods of describing the meanings of words. Connotation refers to the wide array of positive and negative associations that most words naturally carry with them. Whereas denotation is the precise literal definition of a word that might be found in a dictionary. So, in a simpler words, we mean denotation is what the word exactly means and how it's explained in a dictionary. While connotation refer, refers to a wide arrays, okay? It might be positive and it might be negative. Example, let's take an example. The ocean. Ocean. In denotation, what does it mean literally? A large body of salt water that covers approximately 70% of the Earth's surface appears different shades of blue, often with waves and currents. This is denotation. But if I want, uh, uh, also contains various types of plant and marine animal life. If I want to take it into connotations, what does it express or what does it show? The ocean. It shows peace. Tranquility, expansiveness, the unknown, the power of nature, etc. So you see the difference? When you read the first explanation, you get information. You get what it exactly means. But when you read the second explanation, it touches your feeling. Okay, It touches your imagination. It touches your conception. Okay, What you think about it. So this is the difference between denotation and connotation. Let's move now to positive and negative connotations. Denotation is of one, one type, but connotation is of two types, let's say. It's positive and negative. Words may have positive or negative connotations that depend upon the social, cultural, and personal experiences of individuals. For example, the words childish, childlike, and youthful have the same denotative but different connotative meaning. So if I, if I go to the dictionary, I will find the childish, a childlike and youthful have the same meanings. But from the connotative meaning, 
each one has a different one. Okay? Childish and childlike have a negative connotation. Pay attention, negative connotation. Why? As they refer to immature behavior of a person, which is not good. Whereas youthful implies that a person is lively and energetic. So when we say that someone is lively and energetic, we mean here a positive sign. Okay? So this is the difference between positive and negative connotation. Let's take some examples for uh, denotation and connotation. For example, poison. Denotation or in the dictionary, take the word denotation as dictionary. A substance causing illness or death when eaten, drunk or absorbed even in relatively small quantities. But the connotation, we can say harmful, dangerous, evil. And yes, you might notice that they are negative. Pesticide, denotation, a kind of poison meant specifically to kill insects or weeds, etc. Connotation, helpful, safe for humans, and good. Okay? A word can have a positive or negative associations or connotations. Let's see this uh, chart. It contains different uh, words with their positive and uh, negative connotations. Plain. The positive connotation for plain is easy, but the negative connotation for plain is gawky. Unusual. The positive connotation is extraordinary. The negative connotation is bizarre. Firm. The positive connotation is determined, and the negative connotation is on yielding okay so guys now we went over everything we explained the new theme which is about the technologies or tools that help in explorations and how they developed from the history till now and they how they are keep developing and uh, it shows that uh, Tools and uh, explorers use different tools since history. So it's not a new idea. And it's not a modern idea. It's ha it has been a, an old idea, but uh, uh, but it has been developed or it changed over time. Okay? We went over the vocabulary words, which are application, catastrophic, computation, deployed, elevating, magnetic, obsolete and subsequently revise them revive revise their meanings in order to solve the exercises in the worksheet also we uh, talked about the compare and the contrast the skill uh, which uh, we mean that we use the compare and contrast compare in order to show similarities uh, and we use the contrast in order to show differences Okay, and the last one was connotation and denotation is the for using words or when writing words or sentences. When we say denotation, take denotation from the first letter, D, dictionary. So it's exactly as we mean, for, as it's written in the dictionary, it's literal meaning, while connotation, when it touches or it works on your feeling, and uh, for sure it has po there are positive and negative connotations. So guys, now at the end, I hope that everything is clear for you. Uh, now, when you finish and you mainly uh, master like 80% of the video, you can go uh, to the worksheet now, start to solve it by yourselves individually. Don't worry if you make mistakes. You must make mistakes. Uh, don't worry or get confused if, if there's something that you don't know how to solve it. Wait for me till tomorrow uh, in the live Zoom. We're going to go over, go over everything in brief, in like five to ten minutes. Then the rest of the live Zoom will be for solving the worksheet. Okay, guys? Till uh, that time, stay safe, uh, concentrate and study. Okay? Love you all. Bye.